Today's episode of the BS Podcast is brought to you by SeatGeek. That's our presenting sponsor since 1977. Find the best tickets for sporting events, music, wrestling, opera, and more. You can even find some last-second tickets to Tankapalooza 2017 in the NBA if you want to watch NBA teams trying to lose games intentionally get better draft picks. I have SeatGeek on my phone. It is by far the easiest way to shop for the best tickets. Buy and sell tickets in just two taps on your phone. Everything fully guaranteed. Try it out. Download the SeatGeek app today or go right to SeatGeek.com. We are also brought to you by Sports Crate, the exclusive subscription crate, crate, subscription crate of the MLB. Have you ever wanted to throw out the first pitch, meet your favorite all-star, get exclusive collectibles and authentic apparel that you can't get anywhere else? Here's your chance with Sports Crate starting at $40 per month. Sports Crate delivers exclusive gear and once in a lifetime experiences for your favorite MLB team. Tate, I wonder if they have Benintende t-shirts. I love that guy. I love him as much as I love my son and my daughter. Join now at sportscrate.com. Subscriptions are limited. And finally, we are brought to you by the Ringer Podcast Network. If you love WWE and WrestleMania talk, subscribe to the Mass Man Show. If you love video games, try out Achievement Oriented. If you love TV and movies, head over to Channel 33 and The Watch. If you love college basketball and the draft, Ringer University has you covered. If you love the Masters, subscribe to Shack House. And if you, and we also have the Ringer NBA and NFL shows as well. And all April, catch up on new episodes of the Ringer MLB show with Ben Lindbergh and Michael Bauman inc- exclusively on TuneIn. You can get a 60-day free trial just by going to TuneIn.com slash Ringer. I wish the Celtics had had a 60-day free trial today because uh, they certainly needed it. They needed about 60 days to catch up to that, the beating that Cleveland laid down on them. We're going to bring in Joe House to talk briefly about that, but really to go over my awards ballot because I have to hand it in by, I think the deadline's Friday, and I have not made any major decisions yet, but I just want to talk it out with House. This is what we do. He's he's my sounding board. We're going to go in the muse cage. Kobe built us a muse cage. We're going to go right into it and talk about the uh, all-NBA, MVP, rookie of the year, coach of the year, all that stuff. Not making final picks. We're just going to feel it out. But first, our buddies from Pearl Jam. All right, taping this on a Wednesday night, we decided it would be a smart idea to wait until after the Celtics-Cavs game because we were going to learn so much. And I guess what we learned is that the Celtics stink and shouldn't be taken seriously. What did you learn, Joe House? I wouldn't say that the Celtics stink. I was, I'm was. i glad that we gave it a little bit of time. The game ended maybe an hour ago. We needed to let you have a little bit of, of cool-off time. They stink. What I think we saw was, was really the um, playoff Cleveland. Playoff Cavs. Okay. Play that, we, so you're we, not worried. We don't, we don't have to talk about defense anymore. They shut down the Celtics on the perimeter, and the Cavs took care of the basketball. Two pretty important things. I mean, that was a little bit of a referendum on you know exactly what Cleveland is poised to do as we approach the the playoff season. Eh, I'm not. I just think the Celtics played bad, and LeBron turned it okay. up. In the second quarter, LeBron was like, I'm the best player in the league. I'm tired of hearing all this other stuff. I'm not giving up the one seed. And he laid the smack down. And all of a sudden, they were up 18. You know, but I, I think, oh, oh. Hey, I mean, that happened. They, their defense was definitely better. I don't think the Celtics are playing that well. And I've been afraid to tweet this because I didn't want it, people to think it was a reverse jinx. But, you know, they've had success. I, I think they've won like they before that Cleveland game. They'd won like seven of their last eight, something like that. And they'd played a couple good games during the month, but they're just not shooting well. And and when Isaiah's not on the floor, they're just not able to generate any offense. Marcus Smart's been in a funk since the All Star break. And uh, but this I, is yeah, this, this is the challenge with this Celtics team, and this is why um, folks, both you know, fans and people on the outside kind of scratched their head, at least I did, um, with the idea that the Celtics would stand pat at the trade deadline. Right. Now, I understand that as the trade deadline approached, you know, whatever the price may have been for guys that they might have been interested in got skewed. Um, but they, they, if they were interested in making a serious run this 
season, yeah, it was pretty apparent that they needed one more piece. I would say. Yeah, I even look at somebody like Boyan on your team, who is more of a stretch the floor guy. Doesn't get to have the ball that much in his hands, but is somebody that could do that and create shots for people. But when you think like the Jericho spot and the Amir Johnson spot, to think that you actually have a chance to win a title when when you have guys that are out there that just aren't dangerous, you know, you can get away with one. I don't know if you can get away with two. And then Smart's been in, in just an offensive funk. He can still make plays that swing games, but he hasn't been able to shoot. You put a lot of non threats out there, and I think well, and, and that's you the didn't disappointing. Even mention thing. Jay Crowder. And Jay Crowder's another one. I mean, the team shot. A lot of they shoot a lot of threes every month, but I think they were like thirty four percent from three in March, and uh, it's just not good enough, you know, for the amount of threes they shoot and the amount they rely on Isaiah. I think they've gotten more predictable. My thing is, this is why I like Toronto so much, and I, why I think Toronto is by far the biggest threat in the East to Cleveland. You know, they they're flexible. They can throw out different types of lineups, and if one lineup's not working and one looks not working, they can go a little bigger, they can go a little smaller, they can give you an all-defense lineup, they can give you a shooter lineup, and the Celtics don't have that flexibility. And to be honest, I don't think Cleveland does either. Cleveland, you saw it, it tonight with no Thompson. It's basically like it had to be the LeBron show, or, and, or otherwise it's not like they had a whole bunch of looks to throw out, you know? Well, it's got the... On that point, the LeBron show is still a pretty good show. LeBron show is a great show. Countdown had a good piece tonight before the game about uh, part of their defensive problem was LeBron and the fact that, you know, probably smartly, because who cares about the regular season, he he takes plays and series and quarters off on defense. So does Westbrook. Well, so we've does been Harden. kind of, yeah, we were advocating a little bit for this as the season has progressed. I mean, it was befuddling that he was leading the league in minutes at, at the midway point. And frankly, to me, a little concerning because of all the, the mileage. Um, I think our thesis at the beginning of the season, which was, you know, let's let LeBron go out and see if he can validate the um, title run that, that he more than anybody really produced with a follow-up MVP year. That was yeah. kind of the idea that you put on the table. And, we, and I, I, I kind of think there might have been something to that because there really wasn't any other good reason for him to be leading the league in minutes through the first half of the, of the NBA season. But, you know, he's been looking for, now that it's apparent that, that you know, they're, they're pretty well slotted into one at worst two in the East. And, you know, they, they made a couple moves here um, at trade deadline and since in, in acquiring more pieces. It is the right move for them to let him get some rest as we um, head into the, a stretch, and, he doesn't and want here it. we are he's, now. But he's, he said he doesn't want it. He's not interested. He's, you know, it, it must be something about his mindset and his body, and he maybe he's in a groove and he doesn't want to take the time off. I, I got to say, I, you know, when Thompson was out, I thought that was great for the Celtics because he kills them. But then you watch them, and LeBron's playing a lot of the four, and it's a little bit of a smaller, more malleable lineup. And he really should be a four. Like, in the way basketball is played in this day and age, it always feels clumsy when Love, Thompson, and Love are all out there, you know? And when LeBron's at the four, it made me, tonight made me wonder because Love played better um, and LeBron played better. I mean, he was trying, so it's hard to take too much from that. But it made me wonder when they get to the playoffs if there's if they're going to try to limit the amount of times Love and Thompson are out there together. Does that make sense? It, it makes sense, and it's also kind of scary, the idea of one of those two guys coming off the bench, you know, playing with the second unit for yeah. Cleveland. Yeah, I agree. I mean, it, they still, they have a lot of bad defensive players out there, you know, and I and I think they could ratchet it up for one game, but when you're talking about, you know, seven-game series every two weeks, basically, I'm still skeptical that well, they can play defense well enough. The defensive stats for them are really abysmal, and it's not a good sign. Like, historically, it's a bad sign when – you know, if you're that bad on defense, I think a good example is like the 2010 Celtics, who is another team that had an on off switch. And that team was 27 and 27 over the last 54 games. And everybody's like, that's it. They, they, they just think they could turn it on and off, whatever. And they turned it on in the playoffs and they beat LeBron and they got past Orlando and they made the finals and they got within one minute of winning game seven. But you can do that when you have Kevin Garnett on your team. And you could do it when you have Tibbs as the coach and when you have guys like Pierce and Rondo back when he was still 
a freak athlete on both ends and you know they had the personnel to do that i don't other than lebron like who are the guys on cleveland that you would say like oh that's the foundation of a great defense they don't really have it you know yeah but 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 the answer is lebron yeah, but he's never they been like Ka- he's never been Kawhi, you know. No, 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 no. They're they're not. They they play team defense. They're not. Yeah. They're you know. I've I don't think you've ever in this run that they're on right now. You say, oh, there's here's a, a guy that's going to lock down you know his counterpart on the opposing team. They play a- excellent team defense and they're excellent um, team rebounding, and that that really to me is the strength and what sets them apart from the East, and that's why. Your point earlier about Toronto was so interesting because Toronto really fortified itself yeah. in that particular area, and I love the toughness that that Toronto has shown. I, I really enjoyed them um, getting you know, up getting, on Lance. I loved it too. Getting right in Lance's groove. I mean, yeah. PJ Tucker was having none of it. And I that's really why enjoyed the, that. Yeah, and that's why the PJ Tucker trade was so smart. It's not just that he's defense off the bench, but he's a badass. You know, he's always a guy, I'm, even on bad Phoenix teams, getting into it with people very low stakes. That trade, that trade hurt. That that acquisition hurt my feelings, and I, and I, I think it hurt yours as well. Like, it did. Why couldn't my team have got that guy? Well, you can't complain too much. You got Boyan. I, I I'm saw not your, complaining. I'm just saying. The four teams in the East are are all fun and unique in their own ways. I saw your team in person last week, the Washington Wizards, playing the Clips. Yeah. John Wall is just out of his mind. It's just he's at a whole – he's at a level now. And the last time I remember – I don't feel like this with Westbrook because I'm not positive he's human. When I see Westbrook in person, I'm not afraid he's going to get hurt because I don't – even though, like, I feel like he's like the Terminator. If he broke something, it would just grow back. But I remember seeing Derrick Rose five, six years ago. I remember writing about it, like being afraid for him physically because he was going so hard and so fast. I was like, man, that guy's going to get hurt. You know, it just didn't seem like it seemed like he was pushing the limits of speed and and uh, and balance past a point that it probably should go. I felt it that way a little bit watching Wall in person. He's so fast that sometimes he falls over. I've never seen a guy going so fast that it's like their feet can't keep up and they just kind of tumble forward into the cameras. Do you get worried well, about two, him two physically things. sometimes? Yeah, two things on that. Um, this season is the first. It's pretty apparent that he's been 100% healthy. And not only is he healthy, but he's like uh, he has health confidence. Yeah. You know, like he trusts his legs. He trusts himself. That, that he can play with a type of um, speedy recklessness. He, he's always been fast, and he's always been in the top three of guys end-to-end. End. But this season is a revelation because of how confident he is. In, in, you know, he had both knees. He's had work done on both knees over the last few years. Um, right. He's also physically stronger now. Um, he's a little bit bigger. The funny thing about the point you're making where he, he gets a little bit out of out – of, uh, out of balance, it has the effect, I think, having watched him for a long time, of, of taking away from his ability to get to the free throw line. Yeah. Because he doesn't get foul calls the way that a guy of his stature should and for the amount of times that he gets to the basket. Yeah. And I think it's because the way he, he looks, the way he plays, it's not easy for the refs to, to call all contact. I think he's – I'd really have to think about this and go through – Every season to make sure I'm not missing anyone. But I can't imagine I've seen anyone faster in person. I think Rose was crazy fast. I think Westbrook's crazy fast. I think younger LeBron was sneaky, unbelievable fast. You don't think of him, but he's 6'8", the ground that he covered. And then going way back, like, remember Ricky Green going way back? That guy was, like, lightning fast. There's been guys from the past, but I can't imagine anyone's faster than Wall. The, the, The revelation for me that game, other than how fast he was, was... You know, Chris Paul, who made all defense for a bunch of years and was always somebody that could stay in front of everybody, he, he couldn't do it. Like, it, for four quarters, he could do it for the first quarter, and he was having his way a little with Wall, but as the game went on, the speed and the athleticism of the Wizards became a real problem for the Clips, which was fascinating because, you know, they have DeAndre and they have Blake, who on paper is one of the best athletes in the league, only physically he's not not the same athlete anymore. I think his body's really banged up. And he used to dunk over people, and now he goes up and under and does all this stuff that you do when your body's not right. 
and Wall and Beal and Kelly Oubre, my boy, uh, athletically really kind of imposed their will, and they almost they almost came back from a game that seemed like it was over. But you know, Washington has the same problem the Celtics have. Their best lineup is too easy to score on. You know, like that that the Washington's the- best lineup is Wall and Beal, Oubre or Porter. Boyan because he stretches the floor and then Gortat and it's just too easy to score on that. So then you got it. You bring Markeith in and he could guard somebody like Blake. He got kicked out of that game on Wednesday, but um, you bring Markeith in. Now you don't have quite the same stretch of four. And, you know, they're always giving up something to get the lineup they want. And the Celtics are like that too. Their best lineups, you know, Isaiah's out there. He's, you got to hide him on somebody. You play a team like the wizards. You can't hide him. You can't put him on Porter. You can't put him on wall. You can't put him on Beal. And uh, and that was what I what I learned in that Wizards game. It's like Boyan's great to have out there, but he's got to guard somebody on the other end. It's tough, you know. If you're going to play him and Porter or him and Ubre, there's really nobody for him to guard. Somebody's going to be able to beat him off the dribble, you know. Yeah, the Wiz formula is to outscore the opponent. Yeah. they're not they're not getting crucial stops at the end of games. Dangerous, and that's why Toronto. I I, I was saying to uh, our friend Hershey today that. I think I don't know if Boston has another gear. You go to the playoffs and it's like you kick it up one notch. I think Bo- I, I totally think this, agree. I, I think Boston is who right. they are, and I think Washington is who they are. I think Toronto can kick it up a notch. I think that's the team I, I, that I look at and I go. I think they can go up a level defensively, offensively. They have two guys who can get shots. They have shooting. They have a big guy. I have my eye on them, and for some reason, they have the fourth best odds in the East, which I, I just can't wrap my head around. Unless Lowry is not going to be healthy. Well, I, there, there's no indication that he's not, right? I don't know. What are you hearing, Tate? He yeah, he played. It seems like he's. Yeah, it seems like he's 85, 90%. If he's going to be 90%, yeah, so, that team should have the same odds as Cleveland, in my opinion. Well, and, I, 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 like, I, I like him a hair behind Cleveland. I mean, it's still a show me thing with. with uh, Toronto. I mean, let's not let's not crown their ass, but it's they're very interesting. They're compelling uh, foil this season. I don't trust Cleveland for the, for the Cavs. Huh? I, I don't trust Cleveland. I don't trust on off switch teams. I think that's a really dangerous game to play. You know what's fun about the East, though? You know the Celts are probably going to be the two seed. I think they could lose to any of those te- lower seeds. I really do. Like Milwaukee came into Boston last week. And Boston really needed the game because, you know, they had a chance to kind of secure the one seed for at least a day or two. And Milwaukee just legit beat them. And it wasn't like one of those things where, uh, you know, it was like, ah, oh, we did, we, they caught us by surprise. Like, Milwaukee's a playoff team. It's like you knew they were coming. It's a bad matchup for the Celtics. They always play them tough. And Milwaukee just beat them. Miami almost beat them. Chicago, who the hell knows with them? They play Chicago like, you know, national TV Rondo and Butler and Meritich is making one of the great restricted free agent contract runs. There's that one team, the Celtics, Paul George and Indy, there's that one team the Celtics could play that I would feel that great about. Don't you feel the same way about Washington? Would you be shocked if Washington I, lost in round one? No. And in fact, you know, the, the, the great disappointment of this postseason will be if the Celtics and the Wizards don't face each other. I know. Because of the... The little history we, we the teams have developed, you know, the, the little uh, the the chippy animosity, which is very enjoyable. I mean, yeah. I can only imagine what what the Wiz would wear to the playoff <laughs> games after the All Black. You know, right. this is a funeral game. Um, but you know, so so the, I they but I have the exact same view. The only team I don't fear at all, they I don't even know if they're going to make the playoffs. Is Atlanta? I, I don't fear Atlanta. I don't believe Atlanta yeah, can either. beat either yeah. Washington or Boston. You're right. I, Millsap scares me a little, but it does seem like Atlanta's dying. Dwight is, Dwight's like that 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 guy in the airplane who's coughing, and it's a six hour flight, and you're just like, man, I hope I don't get that. And the guy coughs the whole flight, <laughs> and by the sixth hour, you're like, I think I'm okay. I think I don't think I got it. And then the next day, you're just coughing up oysters. That's Dwight. It's, Dwight's the guy in the plane pretty- who's just coughing, and you're like, I. Are we are we gonna get that? Are we like it, he just has a way of contaminating whatever team he's on? It's unbelievable. I think it's unfair to 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 blame this year's Atlanta. Oh, on I, Dwight. I don't. I think it's they totally should, fair. I I, lo- I love blaming they Dwight Howard. What What's they more were, fun than blaming Dwight should, Howard? <laughs> they should have done what they were poised to do, which is just tear it down. 
and then they hit the, the pause button, and now they're stuck in, in no no man's land. Well, I mean, as the tw- trade deadline approached, Paul Millsap was on the trade block. And that was appropriate. They should have torn it down. Now he's on Rob Hennigan's whiteboard, along with every other uh, every other <laughs> stretch board. If for anyone listening who didn't see this, they the or Magic took a picture of this free agent that they were signing. The guy's agent took it, and in the background there was a whiteboard that had all of Orlando's summer plans for uh, what they call them hybrids, hybrid forwards it's, that look, they might be interested in signing. This was the funniest thing that's happened all season. I loved it so much, dude. It's it's time. You you got to bring it back. I don't know how many years it's been. The the summit has to come back. The, the worst GM, GM summit. summit. Yeah, yeah. Right. the you worst might. GM summit. <laughs> it's time, brother. You might be right. I might have to start working on it. Hennigan, the best part was the list had like Chandler Parsons and Lou Dang on it. How about this? Don't put those guys on a list. They're available. <laughs> oh, this is one phone call. That's a great list. Yeah. What a funny list that is. You just call Memphis is and you go, the- I think I want to trade for Chandler Parsons. Memphis is like, good. He's it. What do you want? Here, take him. Please. Well, that, that is a key element for the atrocious GM Summit. What are the worst contracts? Those are the ones we want. Yeah, dang and Parsons. What the fuck are you doing, Orlando? <laughs> Spectacular. What is I? You know, I hate advo- advocating for a firing, but I, I don't know what more we need to see from Orlando. Like just going into the season was a horrible game plan, and all the power forwards they had, and then it's like it took the whole season just to put the right guys in the right spots, and then their whole summer plan leaks on Instagram. So it seems like a fire well, offense. There's, there, there's been a whole slew. I mean, it's Orlando is is, is is just the the hot, you know, sh- shitty GM team of the moment. But, yeah, there's you know, more. Phoenix Fly, had a little spot there. Yo, yeah. Philly giving away Nerland. Nor- Noel was inexcusable. The, let's not talk about the Knicks ever. Yeah, the Knicks. I mean, they have to be in there. How about, how about uh, Philly's medical staff? What about yeah, how, how many, how many funny. ligaments and broken feet and all these things? And the guy, he's fine, and then he's not. And all of a sudden, he's out for the year. And what the hell's going on there? Yeah, there's some poorly run teams. Hey, we're going to take a quick break. Let's take a quick break to talk about my old friend, MeUndies. If you've been settling for store-bought underwear five-packs, and I really hope you're not, take your underwear seriously, people. I have something that will change your life for the better. MeUndies. When was the last time you splurged on some great underwear? I wear MeUndies every day. It, it, it really adds about 8% of a hop to my step. I got to say, it's nice to have nice underwear. It's the first thing you put on every day, the last thing you take off. MeUndies are made out of sustainably sourced micro-modal, a fabric that's three times faster than cotton. Unbelievably comfortable. I don't know how many times I have to tell you. The top drawer of my dresser, full of MeUndies. Once you go MeUndies, you never go back. The world's most comfortable underwear. And they even have some cool designs, including one that had a whole bunch of lips on it that made my wife laugh the other day. But I also think she kind of liked it. Yeah, MeUndies. Always keeping the spouses and girlfriends and boyfriends on the toes. You can save up to 33% off MeUndies with a monthly subscription. Select your style, size, and plan. MeUndies will send you undies. They think will make you and whoever you care about swoon for every month. And if you're not ready for that, you can still save 20% off your first pair. My listeners get 20% off their first pair plus free shipping. You only have to go to MeUndies.com slash BS. Once again, MeUndies.com slash BS. And since we're here... Let's talk about watches. Movement was started by two broke college kids that wanted to wear stylus watches but could not afford them. Movement Watches was founded on the belief that style should not break the bank. Kind of sounds like, I don't know, me starting a website 20 years ago and thinking that people would want to read internet sports columns. A little bit like it. By selling their products entirely online, Movement was able to cut out the middleman and the retail markup in order to provide you with the best price possible watches starting at just $95, a fraction of what department store brands typically charge. This revolutionary pricing, along with Movement's classic design, quality construction, styled minimalism, 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 Tate, has led to over 500,000 watches being sold in over 160 countries. They sent me one. It's spectacular. Step up your watch game. See why people across the world love Movement watches. Go to MVMT watches.com slash bill and get 15% off today plus with free shipping and free returns that's mvmt watches.com slash bill join the movement 
Speaking of moving, a guy who likes to move toward food, Joe Hess. All right, we're back. So one thing I noticed about this season that's pretty weird, and I'd have to look at all the seasons, but uh, the win totals are low. And, and I remember this happened after – this usually happens when there's too much talent. As weird as that sounds, the NBA can have almost too much talent. Sometimes it's great for us no, as fans. Parody. The yeah. parody creeps in. Sure. It's, it's, it's a good parody. It's like a positive parody. But this happened when they merged with the ABA in 1976. And you look at those next three years of records, and like nobody could get to 60 wins because there were so many good, every team was loaded. And, you know, you, I think Portland, the year they won in 77, they probably had like 48 wins. And, you know, you just had. Everybody was closer to the middle than than maybe we're accustomed to. And then you get to the 80s and you have the haves and the have-nots and all this stuff. And we go in these cycles with the league. But right now, you know, the Cavs are 51 and 27. And they're the, they're the leader in the East. The Boston's got 50 wins. Toronto has 48. Washington has 47. And then the next one is Milwaukee at 40. And then you go uh-huh. to the West. Golden State has 64. They're probably going to finish around 67. San Antonio is going to be over 60. They're at 60 now. Houston's 53 and 25. Nobody else might get to 50 wins. Utah's 48. Clips 47. OKC 45. Memphis 42. And then there's the Portland-Denver combo at 38 and 37. But um, my point is when a team like Cleveland doesn't look as good as, you know, the typical one seeds we have and they seem super flawed, it, some of that might just be that the league is so much better and it's just tougher to rip off 60 win seasons. It also makes me think that there's going to be a chance that we see a one, eight upset or a two, seven upset. I don't think we'll see it in the West. Although, you know, San Antonio, I always feel like is, is a suspect just because they only have one all-star. If you have one all-star. I think you're beatable in any playoff series, but, uh, but, but, but in the East, I think absolutely. Toronto, Washington, Boston. Cleveland's probably not going to lose. LeBron's not going to lose in round one He'd, over his dead body. But the other three, I think, could happen. Could we see a major round up one upset? Are you prepared for that? I'm I'm kind of not. I mean, would it be major if Houston – who's Houston set to play right now? Memphis right, or the Clippers? Right now we have the Westbrook Harden death match in round one. Oh, my God. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah. well, so that's not – there would be nothing – Shocking about that, right? Well, how about Memphis? The- how about Memphis San Antonio? A lot of history with those two teams. The Gasols going head to head. They just had a close game. Memphis has beaten them before. Not inconceivable. Not inconceivable. I, 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 I'm Portland not Portland beating Golden State. I, inconceivable. In, inconceivable. Yeah. Inconceivable. No chance. Denver hanging with Golden State. Not beating them, but at least giving them a series. Anyway. We're going to talk. Well, I, I'm, Go ahead. I'm preferring Denver in the playoffs to Portland just because I want to see um, Jokic. I want to see the Joker. Um, you know, and, the, and guys on the come up like that who get the first taste of the playoffs, that's always a revelation. It's always an important, you know, marker for, for the, those kinds of guys. So that's, I'm rooting for Denver. Who do you have Rob Hennigan's whiteboard against Phil Jackson's sleeping pill medication? That's a that's a draw, isn't it? It's a draw. Rob Hennigan's whiteboard. It's a draw. Uh, the hybrids. There's a lot of hybrids in the NBA right now. Oh man, yeah. it's a hybrid frenzy. Look at all these hybrids. Come on in, guys. Check out the hybrids. My God, thank God there are no Orlando Magic fans other than Kevin Clark because they'd be rioting after the hybrids. All right, we're gonna talk about awards. I have a vote. I've had a vote for years, which is great, except for the part that I cannot gamble on, on uh, NBA awards, which is kind of a bummer. But uh, but I am allowed to pick the awards, and this is the toughest year of all time uh, for me with the oh. award. I Now, I did not have a ballot in 1993, and I didn't have one in 1988. I'm sure those years were as tough or tougher in 1987. But this is crazy the mvp i can't remember being undecided heading into the last week of the season so we're going to talk about that all nba is just an apocalypse it's there some of the best players or i should say some of the best statistical seasons i can remember that just have no chance of making the top 15 and you we've talked about this i love the all nba i love the snapshot of the season it really matters 
to me because I'm a, I'm a loser and I'm a nerd about this stuff. Well, it matters to get this right. And then on top of this, there's this added pressure because they added this rule with the salaries with the all NBA. Right. Where, yeah. you know, I, Paul George could be one, one all NBA vote short of making an extra 45 million because I decided somebody else was my third team all NBA forward. I might cost Paul George $45 million. I don't feel good about that. That's a big responsibility. And if anything, if I'm Paul George, he should have sent me a fruit basket by now or some chocolate. Send Tate something. Send Tate some North Carolina gear. I hope gear. he doesn't blame you. Paul George, I send want me to be some gifts. By any of those guys. My vote's available, Paul George. Hook me up. <laughs> you too, Gordon Hayward. Send me some Utah white chocolate. Yeah, oh, it's not. We're not starting with with Paul George, but I, I'm 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 down on Paul George. It, yeah, it seems like it dawned on him that yeah. it was important to take make the all NBA team over like the last three weeks Yeah, and over the course of the season. is disappointing. Yeah. But, pa- but let's not start there. There's other stuff to talk about. Yeah. Paul George, you have not fooled me. So MVP, let's just get it out of the way. I'm not ready to make a decision yet. I wrote off Westbrook a week ago and I had close to him in on my podcast. And since then he's single-handedly won three games by himself. Two, he pulled out of the deep recesses of Oklahoma City sphincter. It was all the way in, and he just reached in there and pulled him out. And then tonight, I did not see tonight's game, but he had like 45, 9, and 10, and they beat Memphis by three. So I'm assuming he might have had an impact on that game. And it just feels like he's peaking at the end here, and there's recency bias, but also like he's peaking because he wants to win the award. And he wants to finish with a triple double, but he's actually delivering. Whereas Harden, who they totally outplayed Oklahoma City on Sunday on ABC. I watched that game for three quarters. Westbrook put up a bunch of cheap stats in the fourth quarter when the game was over. And I left that game thinking it's over. Harden won the MVP. Harden hurts his wrist at the end of the game. Has not been the same since. He left the door a crack open. Kawhi hasn't been shooting as well since the All-Star break. He might have had a chance if he really played lights out, but he just hasn't. Uh, LeBron, that team went in the tank for some degree there, and they rallied back tonight, but they have not played well. Kevin Durant broke his, or uh, or almost broke his leg, and he's been out. He's he, so he's out of the running. Isaiah Thomas can't win. And the more I stare at this, I'm like, fuck. Am I gonna have to vote for Westbrook? I hate I hate when it seems like guys are chasing stats. I don't like voting for MVPs that aren't on a team that I think can win the title. I can only remember doing that one other time with Kobe in 06, and there were just no other candidates. I, I felt like by default I had to vote for him. But it feels like Westbrook is taking the MVP. What do you think? So that's interesting. I'm inter- I'm curious to um, take one one level deeper dive with you on, on your thinking as to why it is that, that Westbrook, and, and you mentioned recency bias, has asserted himself in a way that would change your overall philosophy. I mean, I think there is a very good reason that over the the course of of recent NBA history, no MVP has come from a team that that's um, you know won less than fifty games. the The MVP is a you know it's um it's a mantle. It's an important you know uh, um, stamp for the league. And Westbrook is fascinating and deserves. All of the credit that he's, um, uh, you know, receiving, and it's it's eye-opening, it's mind-boggling what he's achieving. But at the end of the the season, it it strikes me as a little bit more than, than I mean, not much more than just a, a, a neat curiosity. Like, what about so so Oklahoma City was forecast before the season started as a 44-win team, and they're going to come in around 46 or 47. Houston was also forecast to come in in the mid 40s, and they're going to be 12 or 13 or 14 games better. And Harden has been the the straw in that drink, the straw stirring that drink from the minute the season started. And he was he's been on a relentless redemption tear. And that team, you know, uh, had genuine ambition and genuine aspiration to threaten. The Western Conference, and, and you, your own self, uh, I, I don't know if you wrote this, but I know that you said it to me over the last week. You think that Houston has the best chance of challenging the Warriors in the West. I do. Much better chance than, 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 uh, 
the Spurs. So what what is it about? Is it just the fact that he's going to end up averaging the triple double, and because it's such a unique mark that that you think um, it deserves a recognition the, the the league mantle? So here's the here would be the case. Houston's fifty three and twenty five right now. Oklahoma City's forty five and thirty three. Houston's only eight games better than them. And my question is, for everything Westbrook does with that team, for the triple doubles, which as you know, I, I hate triple doubles. I, I just just seems like a totally arbitrary number to me. You know? If somebody has thirty eight points, well, thirteen rebounds, and eight assists, and somebody else has nineteen points, ten rebounds, and ten assists. The triple doubles, the one that gets the pat on the back. Like I don't get that. It seems it's just fucking well, arbitrary. And, and just very, very quick aside on that front. Um, the thing that is going to keep Harden from averaging a tri- triple double this season is about 160 rebounds. Yeah. So that's you know right, and a little less than two rebounds a game is going to be the the barometer for whether or not you know his performance over the course of the season. You know, it, that's the it, thing. It's not like a huge leap. The, the from an offense from an assist points uh, standpoint, they're pretty much even. And Harden's been, you know, he just shoots better. What Westbrook has taken three hundred and fifty more field goals than anybody else in the league. So he takes over four shots a game more than anybody else in the league. He's also averaging ten free throws a game. His usage rate is almost forty two percent, which is by far the highest total in the history of the league. The assist rate is right. like 57. I laid all this out when I wrote the Westbrook column a few weeks ago. Nothing's really changed from like the ball dominant standpoint. Harden's just done it more efficiently. The difference is Westbrook's getting these two and a half, three extra rebounds a game. And, you know, look, rebat, the rebounds are incredible. I will say, and this, go, this is credit to Oklahoma City. I'm not, I'm not trying to demean the Westbrook rebounds thing. Um, but the, the team wants him to get the rebounds. Over and over again, you see these plays where if he's going for a rebound, the other teammate you know, kind of lays out for it, which I think is great. You know, On free throws, you see the two guys box out their guys so Westbrook can come in. It's a smart play because you want your point guard to get the ball and go over throwing the outlet pass to him. But you know, they want him to get these 10 rebounds a game. And my question is, should that swing the MVP? If he was at eight rebounds a game, I don't know if... I don't know if it would totally be the conversation. Now, here's the other, here's the other part to this. He's resonating with fans in a different way than Harden does, and I think that has to count for something when you think about MVP. Like, I think we're going to remember this as the Westbrook Durant season. Ten years from now, it'll be like, what was what was sixteen seventeen? Oh, that was the Westbrook season. That was the year Westbrook had the triple double. Durant left. He went to Golden State. Westbrook was every night incredible to watch. He's more fun to watch than Harden. Harden's a magician. His passes are amazing. That offense is, I, I mean, h- how many Houston possessions could you watch in a row? Like 20, all of them. I, it's they, the same thing every time. Everyone. He's out in the front. Everybody's standing there. I don't know. I mean, Westbrook, at least he does the fast breaks. I think he's a little more fun game to game than Harden is. And also people love the vengeance tour that he's on. And they love that he's just a man possessed and a man scorned. So the storyline's a little bit sexier, I think, than the Harden thing. I get the Westbrook thing. I just can't get wrap my head around voting for MVP for somebody who has no chance to win the title. That's that, that's, that's my when view. I have good that's, candidates. That's the problem. Yeah, when I have good candidates, I have Harden, I have LeBron, and I have Kawhi. Guys who have a chance to win the title. Look, Kawhi's not on a you know, it's not like he's playing with all stars. He's the only all star well, in that team. Look, James Harden only has one All Star on his team. Kawhi. Real quick shout out to Kawhi. That dude plays both ends of the floor. I mean, let's you know, it's wonderful to be wowed by the the uh, astounding feats of Westbrook and Harden um, uh, over the course of, of this season. But neither one of them are going to sniff any kind of All Defense nothing. Right. Kawhi's all all. All defense first team again this year. Yeah, and it's not it's not even just that he's first team. He's in the last two minutes, he's gonna guard the other team's best guy a lot of the time. Which you wouldn't have Harden guarding the other team's best guy. But oh, you know. also quick shout out for Kawhi. First player, and I'm not gonna tell you the year, to 
since Tim Duncan to average over 25 points for the Spurs. Wow. Yeah. Well, the year, I think, was like 2001, 2002, something like that. So maybe a, it was 2000. I don't remember the stat. He's a much better offensive player than I expected him to be. I didn't think – he it, he always seemed like one of those guys that they, they almost like uh, – you know, those kids in high school in any sport, like basketball, soccer, whatever, you're just telling the kid to shoot more. Oh, shoot, I wish he shot more. I wish he was more aggressive. And Kawhi it was almost like they always had to repeatedly tell him to shoot, drive, take the hole, you got him, take him off the dribble. And now he does that, you know? he And he really does seem like he wants to be great. My whole thing, so if the aliens land and we have to pick five guys, who's who's your first pick? We have to beat him in a game to 11. Pick any five. My very first. Yeah. Right. Right. The second. Yeah. LeBron. Me too. That's got to count for yeah. something. I don't know what. Yeah. Like we all think LeBron's the best player. We, we might be overthinking <laughs> this. <laughs> like, but you know, on the flip side, LeBron takes games off and he has rested. And the fact that Westbrook just wants to be out there game after game after game after game and Harden too, the durability. That's what makes me think it's a two man race. Like it's not just that all these guys have been great, but those guys have been great and they've shown up game after game after game after game, which I really think the biggest flaw with all the advanced metric stuff is that there's no way to sneak in little bonuses for durability. You know, I guess win shares is the only one where every time you play and you get you get like a little extra tiny piece of a win share if your team does well. But Well, you know what's uh, uh, if you if you did do that, LeBron would fare much better because again he led the league in minutes through the first half of the season. Right. Nobody's more durable than LeBron. Yeah. So is it fair? Is it fair to say I can wait until the final day, which I've never done before, to decide who the MVP is? I don't have to hand in my ballot well, until to Friday. This. What is the final day? It's it's two days after the season ends, Friday. So I'm gonna wait. Okay. I'm gonna at least do it on Thursday. Yeah. Just, just wait. Let, there's no reason to be in a hurry with it. If, let it. Let it cook a little. If OKC wins their last four and they're 49 and 33, is 49 wins enough for an MVP? Mm. It seems Depends low. on where they end up seeding wise. Also, I mean, if they're a six, seems seed, low. No. The MVP is going to not have home court in any round. I, this is the thing. I, I, I just have a real issue with the MVP coming from a six seed. San Antonio has it. Well, they lost to the Lakers tonight because they've packed it in. They're stuck in the two seed, but they're going to win 62, 63 games. Yeah. Who's the second best Spur? Wow, that's a great question. People would say LaMarcus Aldridge unless they were Spurs fans. I would not. No, and I, I would not say that. I, I the, You heard me. The sound that came out of my mouth would begin with a P because I was going to say. Pow, but oh my you know, God. pow, wow. I don't know about that. I, like, who, who, well, I mean, it's, it's, it's that's worth, the thing. It's know, any, there's no, there's no guaranteed pick. I mean, they could, they could survive in a series if they could survive any, any loss from any guy from number two to number 12. I would argue that when Manu is on his game and kind of feeling it, that's kind of the X factor that they need in that second creator who can kind of make stuff happen, you know? Um, I mean, they have so many injuries. I've seen Johnson Simmons have these incredible games. I know that that the problem with that though is you get to the playoffs and everybody starts staring at each other when they're down five on the road with six minutes left. You know, who are your five guys when? But well, that's why Kawhi, Kawhi needs to take over. Yeah. So. Anyway. Anyway, the MVP. I'm gonna so wait. Tight. So one more question: the fifth spot is wide open. Because you can fill your oh, bit the ballot, you have five spots, and the everybody knows was, what the four is in some order. But that fifth spot, the more I'm staring at it, it you know I I don't think Isaiah Thomas has earned the fifth spot. I don't think Wall has quite earned the fifth spot. The more I'm staring at it, it feels a little Steph Curryish. Is that crazy? Well, Steph reminded everybody. The chef came out and cooked a little bit the last couple of weeks. Got cooking. Yeah. Got from back on the stove, heated up a little bit, got his oil cooking, got got a couple spices that you might not have seen last year. You're right. He, he had them out last year, but he, he got the spice rack and he's put it all, got it all laid out in front of him. 
cooking up a little bit of you know something delicious the last few weeks. I you know don't 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 sleep on Steph. He's he's got a he's got his spark back, and yeah, the shame of it is if Durant doesn't get hurt. I I thought he was the third best player in the league through fifty nine games when it when he went down in game fifty nine. I thought he was the third best player in the league, and I actually thought game to game he was probably the best player in the league. He wasn't putting the same stats up that Harden and Westbrook was, and he wasn't as indispensable to his team's fate as those two guys were. Just game to game, he was just outstanding, and he played some of the best games I've seen all season. It would be interesting if if he had just stayed healthy the whole year. I think he'd be in this mix. I think this would be a five-man race, and I think people would be seriously talking about him because what he was doing defensively and everything, you know? Am I crazy, or would he have been in the mix? Team analytics would would be, you know, there there would be a, there wouldn't be a, 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 a soft penis in any of those pants. <laughs> I, mean, I don't know if I'm allowed to say that. I think but you're allowed team, to say whatever you want. Team analytics, because the efficiency of of KD this season on both ends. So he's his his defense was has been so immensely bolstered by um, joining with a crew who plays team defense. So I mean that's the part of this that was so underrated about KD coming to. Um, uh, Golden State, the defender rim ability, and and you know the Oklahoma City last season showed an impregnability defensively that we hadn't seen before. It was like they had both from one side of the court all the way to the other side of the court because of their length and their athleticism. You know, foreclosed and Durant showed an interest in playing defense in those playoffs, and it really carried through with with. Um, the Warriors and his shooting was his shooting efficiency is like at an all time mark. I, I really think you know team analytics would have put a hard push on the KD for MVP case um, if he could have if he if he hadn't suffered that unfortunate um, leg injury. Yeah, if he was like twenty twenty six and eight and with like fifty forty three ninety splits or whatever you end up with and all that, like it it definitely would have been in play because that team's going to win. You know, they could have won in the high 60s if he was on the team. Quickly, uh, I want to talk about All-NBA because it's it's fun. But Coach of the Year, would you would your jaw drop if I said, who do you think my number one pick is? May, t- I'll give you three guesses. Hmm. Uh, your number one pick. I it's it's too cliche to say Steven, so that's no. not going to be one of my guesses. He's, not, he's not there. I'm not voting for him. Um, I I'm gonna say pop. I that, yeah, you know me too well. We've known each other too long. <laughs> I'm voting for pop. Why can't I vote for pop? Yeah. I voted for him last year. I'm voting for him this year. Why can't I just keep voting for pop? That team's gonna win 62 it's, games. They have one All Star. It's pop. I, I mean, I I agree. I I was prepared to make an impassioned case for Spolstra because what what Miami did in completely. Rerouting its season um, halfway through. He's my number two Just pick. Unbelievable. Here's the here's the thing. Yeah, I, I can't vote for a coach of the year when they go like forty and forty two. I just can't. No, no, I, I'm right there with you. If they were forty five and thirty seven or something, but even that, like, y- you got to bring something to the table more than oh, without him, they oh, they would never have been an eight seed. It's not enough. I thought I think Spoh's done an amazing job, and I and Scotty Brooks, I think, is going to be my third pick. If my guy Scotty Brooks um, gets the Wiz to fifty wins, it's amazing that that benchmark he he will have achieved for them two benchmarks that have not been or been seen in in nearly forty years. Yeah, the fifty wins and a and a division title. He arrives and, and if if that's what he delivers, I mean that's that's meaningful. And I'm with co- with it. coach of the year, you got to look at are, are guys playing better than they did before the guy showed up? If it's a first year coach. Or is the team overachieving with what the talent is? San Antonio, it's like, except for Kawhi, every single guy in that team you would have rather had three years ago. Like that, not an exaggeration. Except for maybe like Jonathan Simmons or Deadman guys like that. But I'm saying like Gasol, Parker, Patty Mills, Ginobili. You would have wanted all those Aldridge. You would have wanted all of them three years ago. 
Danny Green, David Danny Lee, Green, sure. all of them, every every one of them. And then uh, with Washington, John Wall's playing the best he's ever played. Ubre's turned into you know a real game changer off the bench every once in a while. Otto Porter's been out of his mind for where he was. Bradley Beal's put it together this season. I think he gets credit for that. I you know yeah, I don't I mean, know if that happens with Mike Woodson coaching. No, the developmental part is a real eye opener, and we haven't seen it from a coach here in Washington. You know, in in recent memory, is the most polite way I can put it. The other guy that I think is I would also put ahead of Stevens is Dwayne Casey, because yeah, I, I to, Toronto had a I, lot. I of, liked him as yeah, yeah. They just and the thing with the thing injuries. that both he and D'Antoni suffer from to me is what I think is more appropriate is to recognize those GM because the, the, those teams are, are dramatically better as a result of the position that the GMs put those teams in. Right. Um, the, the coaches didn't mess it up. So I think it's right to recognize both the Antoni is the Antoni, the odds on favor to win. Yeah, I have, I forgot to mention him. He's, I don't know if he's going to crack my top three because you know, it was a brilliant move to give the ball to James Harden and just say, you know, do what he did. But, you know, they it's not like they've been lights out the last 40, 45 games, you know. And I know. I mean, I don't feel like know, they're growing that, as a team. That'd be my nitpick. Okay. I mean, they're going to end up with 56 wins. Yeah. They, 50, which, which is a 14 or 15 game improvement from last year. I guess I, guess I can't get over the fact that Jalen told me that Dan Tony refused to practice defense and said defense didn't matter. I can't, I can't ever get over that. <laughs> Jalen might have been better because Dan Tony was, the, was his last stop before he got sent to TVville. Five years later, he's hanging out with my ass in front of a camera. Um, yeah, it worked out well for Jalen. Hey, we're going to take a quick break. Quick break to talk about tune in. Major League Baseball is back. Andrew Benintendi put on 15 pounds of muscle. He looks fantastic. He went deep on opening day. I was thrilled to watch it, and I'm also thrilled to listen to my Red Sox games on tune in. And guess what else? The Ringer Podcast Network has baseball fans covered with the Ringer MLB show, which is playing exclusively on the TuneIn app for the month of April. On top of that, we've partnered with TuneIn to give baseball fans a free 60-day trial of TuneIn Premium to listen to every live home call from every MLB game around the league. It's the way I listen to the Red Sox when I want to hear my hometown announcers. It takes me back to Fenway. Catch the Ringer MLB show only on TuneIn. For the entire month and with your premium subscription you get live mlb games on tune in all you have to do is go to tunein.com slash ringer and subscribe download the tune in app start listening today the ringer mlb show has ben Lindbergh and michael bauman from the ringer who know what the hell they're talking about and who watch everything and it's a really good podcast and we love having it on the ringer podcast network and it's coming back to the ringer podcast network after it has its one month stint on tune in Tune in your everything audio app. Download that tune in app to today or go to tunein.com slash ringer back to house. All right, we're back. All NBA. The hardest. I can't remember having this much talent. I mean, I remember the years. I remember putting Goran Dragic on the second team. Not that he didn't totally deserve it, but he was 22 a night playing well for Phoenix. This was maybe three, four years ago. And now that season doesn't even make it. Like, I don't have Damian Lillard in my top 15, and he's going to, I think he's going to finish with, I'm looking at it, uh, like a 26, 7 and 6 or something. something. Who's shooting 40% for three? And a couple three? of, uh, I don't know if he won NBA player of the, I think he has a player of the month also. Yeah. Not only did I mean, he not I make the he All-Star, March. yeah, he's not going to make my, uh, He's not going to make my my top 15. But so I'm going to get a little. This is not a final list, just FYI. This is just what I'm thinking. You're my sounding board. You're, we're in the muse cage now. All right? <laughs> it feels good. <laughs> we're in the muse cage. Embrace your dark side, Joe House. We can't make good all NBA teams until we embrace our dark sides. There's a dark side I'm, of both of us. Let's it. reach my, it. My penis is soft in my pants. <laughs> <laughs> all right. I'm gonna. I'm not. I don't feel like I'm totally cheating by making Anthony Davis my first team All NBA center. He's played there. Ashik got hurt. Boogie's only been there 25 games. I watched a lot of games where he was a center. Tate, I can say he's a center, right? Tate's nodding. 
I'm okay with that. It solves some issues to be able to put him at center. The other four... It un- is interesting. The other, the other four are unassailable. It's LeBron, Kawhi... Unimpeachable. Yeah. yeah. The, LeBron, Kawhi, Harden, Westbrook. There's no scenario where those four, those four guys aren't on first-team All-NBA, and that gives LeBron, I think, 11 straight, which only the mailman I mean, has on. done. Yeah, I come think on. he made it. I'm pretty sure come. he made it in 07. So if he made it in 07, that's 11 straight. And uh, that's absurd. <laughs> it's just to be one of the top five guys in the league for 11 straight years is absurd. It should, shouldn't happen. It's impossible. You should have one season where you broke a toe or pulled something or herniated a disc, anything. Amazing. 11 straight years. Uh, did you did the Carl Malone thing? You and I couldn't stand Carl Malone. We made fun of him all the time. We made fun of him watching playoff games, how he's going to choke. We we made fun of how he only had two types of moves and how Stockton, he was like a Stockton robot and cheap stats. I wouldn't want him on, on our team. Like we made all those jokes. Part of it was bitterness for you because the bullets passed on him. Who'd you take? Who'd you take instead Kenny of Carl Green. Malone? Kenny Green. Kenny Green. Yeah, how's that? That still doesn't feel good even 32 years later. But yeah, you know, I you see how quickly I had that on the tip of my tongue, by the way. And then they gave Carl Malone the MVP, and I just started writing my Boston Sports Guy column. But you and I were going nuts. This is when back then we barely had email. We would just call and bitch at each other. It was like a podcast without anyone recording it. We just couldn't believe that MJ wasn't recognized. And then he demolished him in the finals, and justice was served. And now I look, you know, now that we have all these efficiency stats. And you look at Carl Malone's stats and the PR every year and just how durable he was. And he was like 27 and 11, 29, 11, 29 and 13 every year forever. And he won 11 straight all NBAs first team during a really good era of basketball. And now I'm wondering if we were too mean on Carl Malone or should I still, should I still feel the same? What do you think? The, the reason you can still feel the same is because what, what's his signature playoff moment? Getting stripped. Well, missing the free throw in game one, 97. And leading to the MJ, fuck you, I can't believe I'm not going to win the MVP shot to win the game. And then a year later, getting stripped by MJ during the three-play shot sequence, which is the greatest three-play sequence in the history of the league. So that's a problem, right? Yeah, it's a problem. We, we can't easily come up with the crowning achievement. Oh, of, I, I know of, what it is. I know what it is. When Stockton made the three over Houston in 97 and said Utah their first finals, Carl Malone said the greatest moving pick I've ever seen in my life. He took somebody, I think it was Barkley, and he was like Michael Orr in the blind side in that scene when Sandra Bullock yells at Michael Orr to block, and he takes the kid all the way over the stands. That, just, that was Carl it, Malone's it does, moving pick. It's incredible. It's on YouTube, true. go watch it on YouTube. John Stockton. <laughs> set free by the greatest movie pick of all time. So maybe that was the signature play. Oh, you know what it was? I, I just I just realized what it was. It was when he told Kobe's wife he was hunting little Mexican girls. Oh, no. Yeah. Oh, no. That was the signature we must, play. This must be a late night podcast. No, that happened. Oh. That's documented. He said it. She's like, what are you doing, cowboy? He said, she said to him, what are you doing, cowboy? And he said, I'm hunting little Mexican girls. And then she got mad and told Kobe. Where was the internet during this? It. We weren't really full sports oh. blog area yet. Yeah. Tate, oh if, you ever tell, if you ever tell my wife that you're hunting little Mexican girls, I'm going to be upset. I just want you to know that. My wife's not even Mexican. But I don't take that personally. Here's my take. Carl Malone, properly rated. <laughs> All right, all NBA. So our first team, you agree with, the, with you agree that that's a nice, nice uh, temporary first team for me heading into next. Yeah, week? the the only thing, um, the only quibble, and it's a very small cue. I kind of understand the idea of Gobert at center. I kind of understand for first team. Go, to well, me, we're going to talk about him in a second. I know he 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 is to me uh, the defensive player of the year. And it feels weird Ooh. to have the defensive player of the year on the second team. So that's another one I've been trying to figure out. Draymond versus Gobert for so defensive, I, I, defensive I, player of the year. I'll give a very quick take on that. I would, I'm would i going to give it to Gobert because I believe that he anchored that team. No team had as many um, 
you know, player man losses, whatever that stat is for injuries. Yeah. Game, you know, whatever the, the term of art is for that. Um, Utah had the most, and it was to all of their, like, important players. And yet here they are. They're going to win 50 games. They're going to be 10 games better than they were last year. And he um, he's the reason. He played all those games. And he passes... He, he, he passes the eye test too, because I saw him. I saw them play the clips. He's gigantic, almost like borderline. It's not quite Mirasan level, but he's he's definitely freaky tall and gigantic. And and guys are thinking about him. They're near the. They're, they're within ten they're feet of the rim, and he's on. Him. He's on. He's on their mind. He's good at switching on uh, on pick and rolls. The Celtics were able to get him in trouble with Isaiah on switches and pull him way way out. It seems like that's the kryptonite for Utah, as if. You can really spread them out. But I thought what Draymond did, especially post Durant, you know, on a on a very good team that's gonna get the one seed and the fact that he can guard all types of guys and he would have nights where just his all around play were the reason that they won the game. You know, he just ca- kinda gives them that extra umph. So I gotta look yeah, at that some more. I gotta I wanna read all the defensive stuff. I'm, I'm stats. acknowledging I'm I'm marking him down for being on such a great team. I mean that that's you know, I understand the perversity of of, of the view that I'm yeah. advancing here. Yeah. So I have him as my second team All NBA, and I, and I, not even really up for grabs. 14, 13, three blocks a game. God knows how many shots affected, but also his advanced stats are freaking nuts. Like his offensive rating, defensive rating, all that stuff. It's like I think his. There's a couple different stats where they're like 30 points apart. The offense, offensive rating is like 30 points higher than the defensive rating. The, all the all the advanced stuff really backs up the impact that he has. Opposing field goal percentage, all that stuff. So I think he's got to be the second the second one. The other ones that would be in the mix for that uh, second spot would be Towns and, and uh, Jokic. And yep. I, I'm not acknowledging Boogie Cousins. Yet again, another, another lottery for Boogie. Um, Not really his fault, by the way. Marcus Gasol, I, I just need my center to get eight rebounds a game. It's two a quarter. I don't yeah. feel like I'm asking for sure. too much. He can't get to eight. Yeah. His, his shooting stats are great, but he's basically turned into a better Brook Lopez with like just with the actual stats. He's 20 and seven every night, and he, but he's making threes. Um, good passer. Like I, I'm not against Marcus Gasol. It's just... It's just too good of a year. Anyway, second team. Do the guards first. Curry definitely. And then it comes down to Thomas or Wall for that second second team all NBA spot. And I gotta be honest, it's up for grabs. I think Thomas and the Celtics have tailed off this last month. Teams have kind of figured out a couple wrinkles to throw at him. His scoring's probably down four points a game since the All Star break. I think he's like only at like twenty six since the break. Not not uh not the not the unbelievable impact that he had before the break. And Wall is just a man on a mission. And uh, I don't know. It's up for grabs. What do you think? So, so this is rude. I, I um, you know, had did this by hand. And I, you can, I'm not going to take a picture of it. I wrote John Wall and then I crossed it out and wrote Isaiah Thomas over top of it. Hmm. And the reason that I'm putting Thomas in is, is two parts. Over the balance of the season, the way he owned the fourth quarter yeah. for the Celtics, especially the first a, 50 games, crucial. Yes, he 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 really buoyed. You know the, the the Celtics don't sniff fifty games without that extraordinary fourth quarter performance that he did, and and him breaking Havlicek's consecutive how many points was it? The score leading the team points? in scoring. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I have him by a hair that, over Wall. I think the last the last couple games, may, maybe Wall can swing it. But uh, regardless, congratulations. I, I mean, I love Wall. It goes without saying. Yeah, I was gonna say congratulations to you. Remember we were talking about John Wall trades and you're two and eight. Like this is well, it. Like one trade of us him, get something. About them. I, I was summarily dismissing them. You kept insisting on talking about it. Yeah. Well, and I like you, doing and that. And you bullied your ringer writers into writing about it. I did. It wasn't a bullying. It was it was uh, it was mean spirited <laughs> suggestions. No, I, you know, O'Connor wrote. Uh, I think it was like Moutier and Gallinari and the Nuggets lottery pick or Jamal Murray was in. Yeah. I can't remember. 
Oh, but I, I, I'm a, I retweeted that after uh, uh, John Wall forty point performance against Cleveland. You were two I, and eight. I, I and and now we're threatening fifty wins. So second team, Go dis- Bear. It was disrespectful. Go Bear Curry. Tough, you know, tough fall for Curry going from two time MVP to second team All NBA. You know, a little sobering. Tough from the moment uh, no, the chefs no, came out. That's the price. That's no, the that, price. That's a heads up. You you say Kevin Durant, please come to my team. I'm willing to sacrifice. Okay. That's great. All right. I think it still hurts a little. And then I, uh, I'll put in Thomas temporarily in the in the second guard spot. The forwards are okay. tougher. The forwards, uh, you have uh, KD. I'm voting for. The, the he only played 59 games. The history of that. Uh, the All NBA voting and MVP voting is you got to really get over like 56, 57. There's a long, mm-hmm. long, long story track record of guys getting recognized for All NBA and even in the MVP voting, playing about over oh, 57 to 65 games. His he got hurt in Game 59 in Washington, so he really only played 58. I would rather yeah. have those 58 Durant games than. 82 Jimmy Butler games, or I guess Jimmy Butler didn't play 82, but I just thought those 58 were so were so spectacular. I can't penalize them because he got hurt and because they're being careful with him the end of the season. Um, but I'm also willing to be talked out of it and nudge him to the third team. He's going to be second team or third team. I would rather put him on the second team because, you know, a dopey injury that he's going to, Zaza falling into his leg, it's not like it was, you know, it was a total fluke. And uh, and he was spectacular, and I think it should be recognized. But if you think fifty nine is not enough, tell me. I don't think fifty nine is enough. Okay. I think the the proper way to acknowledge his impact on Golden State and how um, cool that whole thing worked out, honestly, is to is to put him on an All NBA team. The proper All NBA team is the third team. I you might think this is nuts though. I have Greek Freak on the second team All NBA. He's he's in a on my list. Position. He's on the list. Yeah, I mean, they're they're a playoff team. He held the fort. He's been crazy fun to watch. So I had I had the Freak, and I had Durant. And if you were going to talk me out of Durant, I was going to put Draymond on the second team. Oh, I already have Draymond on the second team. I have him at at. at uh, yeah, I have him as the other um, forward along with Freak Freak. Okay. I have to think about that. My, my second team is Thomas, Curry, Draymond, Freak, and Gobert. And I'm only moving Go- Gobert. I'm dropping Gobert down because, you, you know, you made the case for David. So either Draymond or Durant for that second team. Yeah, sure. That's fine. Draymond was really great like, this year. I really love watching Draymond. Draymond deserves it. Yeah, and he's he's such a great teammate. He doesn't care if he scores and guards the other team's best guy. He's a great passer, plays with passion, does everything something crazy every once in a while. Who cares? Yeah, I have. All right, so we we're aligned on that. Third team, Jokic or Towns? I have Jokic well, right now. You know now. what? I have to, it has to be Jokic. One of those teams is threatening to make the playoffs, and one of them is a, is a pretty significant disappointment through the first half of the season. I agree. Minnesota's headed for 32 wins. I just want to mention that Towns is putting up a 25-12. 25-12. Let's, just, let's, let's he, just mention He's that. been ferocious over the yeah. last three weeks. And Well, the, oh, it's the last two months. I think he's been like 28-13, and 13, something like that. But he... Uh, the team's just not winning, and it's not like they don't have good players in that team. Rubio's played really well since, really since they, the Knicks should have traded for him. Nah, they don't. And How neither, can they not play defense? It's Tibbs coach team that doesn't play a lick of defense. I'm disappointed that Towns isn't better on defense. Tate, why isn't Towns better on defense? Just that hasn't been coached yet. Yeah, I think it's disappointing. Where's Tibbs at? Where, come on, Tibbs. Tibbs, teach him something. Another reason for Jokic. All right, so Jokic center. Durant as one of the third team spots. So here here are the other choices. Jimmy Butler. Um Paul George. Gordon Hayward. Or we can cheat and put Carl Anthony Towns there. 
because he has played forward. Oh. He's center forward, and they play a lot with him and Dang. And we could stick him in his 25 and 12 right in there. The catch is that that team's going to win 31, 32 games. The same logic that last year I cut Boogie out of the All NBA because his team wasn't winning. And I'd feel like a hypocrite if then I was like, well, but Towns, you know, doesn't get technical. So he should. So I, I do feel like it's Butler, George, or Hayward. Two of those three guys, it's like a $45 million decision. I went with you on Paul George. I, I feel like he's turned it on lately. I've flicked by too many games on League Pass where it just doesn't seem like he wants to be there. And just seems like he's dreaming about his that what house he's going to buy in L.A. in a year and two months. Butler's played really hard. If but if Chicago makes the playoffs, I think Butler's the third, uh, the third team forward. I've seen him play plenty of games where he's the best guy on the court. What do you think? I I agree. I want to give a bunch of praise to Hayward. First year he made the um, All Star team, and he <laughs> is the guy that gets the ball when they need big shots at, at you know in the inside of four minutes, five minutes when the game is still in the balance. Yeah, and 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 he he welcomes it. I, I've I've enjoyed seeing him that confidence, and he has a nice inside out game. Um, you know, I, I, he he he's made a lot of big jumpers. He beat the Wiz almost single handedly um, tw- twice with just very consistent, very confident square up and and shoot. You know, on the catch and the, the degree of difficulty for Hayward this season in terms of, you know, offensive generating shots. I've been really, really impressed. Having said all of that, I agree that Butler is the guy that gets the slot on the third team um, because there is no Chicago without Butler. The fact that that team is, is, is threatening the playoffs with the, 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 uh, the catastrophic experiment of Rondo and the utterly predictable, um, you know, Wade injury, that that occurred at exactly you know the the, the moment you would anticipate, right? Um, and the fact that they're still sniffing around that that's that's a testament to, to to Butler. And on top of that, yeah, the fact that they're still sniffing around with Fred Hoiberg, with just the worst crew of point guards ever that that, that a playoff team would have had until, uh, or I shouldn't say ever, but definitely. Uh, a really, 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 really horrible group of point guards until national TV Rondo decided to step in. I went to the Warriors game with Tate when they played the Bulls, and it was clear Rondo was the best point guard, and Hoiberg, I don't know whether he just doesn't like him or whether there was instructions not to play him or whatever, but you could see Rondo could had this in him. It, was, it wasn't a shocker, but they made this playoff run with just Rondo, Miritich, who's been great, and, uh, and Butler and a bunch of guys I've never heard of, like... Who's the German guy? Zipsich? Zipser. Zipser? Yeah. Zipser. <laughs> yeah. But the fact that Butler was putting up stats and helping them win games and kind of keeping them alive when they were just a mess and they didn't have yeah. any idea who their five guys were. And you have Dwayne Wade, who just seems pretty miserable to play with at this point in his career. Uh, yeah. So I, I think Butler has the nod. I agree. And then uh, for the guard, uh, John Wall, who John loses Wall. out in a Texas death match to Isaiah Thomas for the uh, second team right now, but that might flip over this last week. Our other yeah. candidates, Damian Lillard, DeMar DeRozan, yep. Kyrie Irving, Michael Conley, Kemba Walker, Clay Thompson, Kyle Lowry, Bradley Beal. Two guys on that list jump out at me. Clay deserves recognition for being a steadying influence. You know, as that that team found its identity. You were worried about Clay getting lost. Yeah, and Clay reasserted himself um, and was a key part, I think, of of helping KD get comfortable in Golden State. So I, I want to recognize him for that. Right. But the the guy that I personally would would give the nod to is DeRozan. Wow. His his first two months were were incandescent, and I think he really helped Toronto with an identity at the outset of the season. They came, he 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 came in so determined to prove to everybody that it was not a fluke, that that Toronto success from the previous season was not a fluke. He worked his ass off in the summer, and he came in and he killed. 
and I want to I want to give him credit for that. And and Toronto is they you know um, above water. They they're I think they're going to get the three seed in the East, and that's with Lowry going down. So I I, I know like you know stat wise that's not um, I don't have a good stat case for DeRozan, but I just I he, he really earned a ton of respect for me from me at the beginning of the season. Well, stat-wise, I would say the fact that they're a top four team in the East and he's averaging 27 a game is pretty good. I love the pretty fact good. that, you know, he's one of those guys in the last four minutes and you're watching League Pass and there's nights that he's just going to score. And it doesn't matter who they're throwing at him or they, you know the little screen and roll's coming or whatever. He's getting in the basket or he's getting his little jump shot. I've been wildly impressed by him, and I'm with you. That was the guy that I was going to pick for third team. I, I've been, oh, so you said wow, and the reason you said wow is because you agreed. I said wow because I was disappointed because I thought we were going to have one awesome argument during one of these three All NBA <laughs> teams. And you know, as usual, we've spent too much time walking, watching basketball together and valued the same things, and now we're not going to have the argument I wanted. I thought for sure you were going to say Dame Lillard. Oh no no. No, they, they that that team uh their whole story's been rewritten by Nurkic. Like how can I give it to Dame? Dame didn't make the all star team. I heard a great story. You can't Nurkic. make the all NBA team without making the all star team. I heard a great story about Nurkic that had nothing to do with the fact that his girlfriend is like one of the all time smoke shows in the history of NBA girlfriends. Oh, hold on a second. My computer's right here. Hold on. Go ahead. <laughs> Proceed. Uh, I, who knows That's if this good. is true or not true, but I loved it anyway. Girlfriend. Apparently during the draft, he snuck off with his buddy to, to smoke a butt. Like he, he was like like kind of a closet cigarette smoker, at least when he's heading into the I NBA. I like that. I, like I just that. love it. It made me like him more. His dad's a bouncer. He's got a hot girlfriend. Sm- smoking cigs. He, he leaves Denver, goes to Portland destroys Denver. All the Denver guys are hugging him after. They clearly either liked him or were totally afraid of him. Uh, I yeah. enjoyed Nurkic. But anyway, yeah. I The Lillard case, I think 10, 12, 20 years ago when we were just less informed and we didn't have league pass and weren't able to see all these games, I think he would have had a better case. But, you know, he, he's a dangerous player. He's been great since the All-Star break. And it's a credit to how good the league is that he's not one of the best 15 players. I mean, look at this team. This is the third LNBA team. Jokic, who's like the next Bill Walton. Kevin Durant. Uh, Jimmy Butler, who's one of the best two-way guys in the league. And then the guards are John Wall, who's a franchise guy having the best season of his career. And DeRozan, who's averaging 27 a game and who's fantastic and who can absolutely be the crunch time scorer on a team that makes the finals. That's your third team All-NBA, potentially. Pretty good. We left off. Carl Anthony Towns did not make an All-NBA team this season. No. Win some more games, Carl Anthony. And and you're you're so done with Boogie. I'm not even accepting Boogie. I mean, the, the dude got <laughs> traded for 40 cents in the dollar. I, I would argue yeah. that uh, I, I, I would put Whiteside ahead of him. I put Brooke Lopez ahead of him. <laughs> That's just mean. That's rude. Brooke You're Lopez. still blocked. He still has you blocked on Twitter. That's why you would do that. Brooke Lopez is playing better right now. He's Twenty and seven every night. He's better. Uh, I, yeah, I'm, uh, I think I'm gonna go, go to my grave as a, as a boogie defender. I, I just feel like you know the dude was done wrong. He had a bad. No, I know. Bad, I, w- I wouldn't face. actually put Brooke Lopez ahead of him, but I, I think I would put Whiteside ahead of him. And you also boogie you have to his, you have to keep your boogie you have to keep your boogie relationship you know in good shape because yeah. he's gonna be on the Wizards in about what twelve months when's he sign with you? I, I whatever I'm don't don't I welcome him I you look know, if Scotty Brooks is the coach he's the, I'm a believer. It would be a total Wizards trade for you to trade like your next seven first round picks every other year, or like. First round pick, pick swap for like five straight years of first rounders or pick swaps Look, to I get boogie, this, and then he would like I, either I'm, leave or get hurt. I'm not going away from it. I would have traded Beal for boogie. Well, now you wouldn't. I, now I wouldn't, but I'm saying you know as the season was kind of developing, 
Would you? Check- and I still think it would be like a decent value. Would you trade Kelly Oubre for Boogie? <laughs> yes, of course. What are you talking I really about? Like that guy. I don't know. I'd have to think. I might, might need to look I at the stats. Him. I love Oubre. I love Oubre too. Congratulations. Your team's are really fun. It's not going to get fun. any stops in the playoffs, but it's a fun team. I'm knocking on wood. The most important thing always is health. we got to have a healthy team. Joe House, thanks for staying up till 1230 at night on the East Coast to finish our podcast that we had to wait for the uh, dramatic ending of the Cavs-Celtics game. That was a dud. But at least, <laughs> at least we have Well, look, you know, I'm, uh, yeah. i got to be up early in the morning. It's the first day of the Masters. When this pod goes up, guys will be playing the game of golf. Oh, boy, yeah. DJ is out, but we're going to have a special broadcast of the Shack House tomorrow night, Thursday Ooh. evening. Look for that little 20 minute, 25 minute hit with me and Jeff Shackelford going through the day's events. And then I think Sunday night, right? Me, you, Jeff Shackelford, a little recap, a little Masters recap. We're going to get it right up after the event. Yeah. You're going to join us, right? I think so. I haven't told my wife yet. All right. Fingers crossed. Yeah, I think fingers crossed Sunday night. Yeah, Shack House, if you love golf, subscribe to the Shack House pod. There's heavy rumors of uh of of a food podcast too that might oh, that might be oh. launching at some point. With yeah. the, that might have the ringer name on it. People are saying people, people are talking. People are talking. Sources are saying stuff. Sources are saying. We our staff just says a lot of opinions on food. Did you congratulate Tate on the title? A lot of them had bad opinions. Tate and I had a nice Texas James today. I I, uh, I, 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 I did um, congratulate him, and I told him I, I, that I would not make the joke about their, their cheating academic way. So I won't do it here either. Longs were champions. Congrats to the Carolina. Yeah, I don't. Congrats to North Carolina and Gonzaga for setting back college basketball for another 20 <laughs> years with that rock fight. Good God. That wasn't even a rock fight. That was just, a, it was like the car pile up when on the icy road when the one car stops and then all the other cars hit. That's what all those field goal attempts looked like. Hey, maybe you shouldn't play these games in 80,000 80, seat stadiums. It's ridiculous. It's, Jason Gay did a great job of that. Oh yeah, he did. He sat in the boondocks, right? He what physically they, went. He paid $170 and then sat at the top of the stadium. It's mm-hmm. awful. The awful. I I do I would like to see them go to the go to uh quarters. I think there's a compelling case for that with uh Women's basketball. Yeah, women's basketball did it, and I, it gets people out. I love it in women's basketball. I it love avo- it. It avoids the bonus. Yep. Which which is what my son used to call boners when he got boners for the first time. Remember that? <laughs> he called him a bonus. <laughs> Dad, I got a bonus. <laughs> uh, thanks to uh, thanks to the Shack House podcast, you can listen to House's golf golf observations all through the Masters. So excited for the Masters. Don't forget about the uh, Ringer MLB show only on TuneIn. And if you go to TuneIn.com slash Ringer, 60-day free trial, one month only. The baseball show, Lindbergh and Bauman, they have a lot of good stuff going on there. Uh, in general, we love working with TuneIn. I, I think that's – did you know you could get all baseball, football, basketball games on TuneIn, House? No, but you know what I, I, I was shocked by was hearing your voice on that Sirius XM radio pumping the tune in. I was like, oh, hey, yeah. I know that guy. Well, you know How about what, it? The cool thing for tune in for me is I can hear my announcers. Because, you know, driving on Sirius or whatever, like half the time or even one third of the time, you might get like the Celtics, I might get Sean Grady. But on tune in, I just get to listen to my dudes. I like my announcers. The ones I like I'm having psyched, my announcers. I'm psyched for, I know this is nerdy. I'm psyched psyched for hockey for playoff hockey because that's who yeah. i want to listen to um my hockey guys well you have ovechkin's going to play in the olympics because putin was like alex you're going to play in the olympics even if you have to leave your team for three weeks you will play in the olympics i was like yes sir i'm playing all those russian guys are going to the olympics i don't know what the nhl is thinking they're all going I they're like not, oh great we love your role but we're going joke. to the olympics there is there's no joke. They are all going. Yeah, they're all going. And if they, if any of them waver, Trump's going to send them. <laughs> Trump, Trump and, and Putin are going to send all the Americans and all the Russians. It's They're going to make a pact. Uh, House, yeah. always a pleasure. Get some sleep. Have fun with the Masters. I know it's one of your favorite weekend uh, weekends of the year, and I'll talk to you really on your is. podcast, Shack House. Everyone yeah. else, uh, back on Friday with another podcast. Talk to you soon.